So yesterday, Sunday, I got my taxes done, and I owe a lot of money. The, it, it's just super painful to see, and it's kind of a surprise. And I, I could pay it off right now, but I already allocated the money to other places like my rent or the money that's in my investment account. So I would say for a quarter, I will be broke because I can't spend any money for, for a long time. And the, this is what the breakdown looks like. So I'm going to keep this on my desk as a reminder not to make bad decisions. No, not to mess around in the stock market, not to be careless with money, not to spend money on people that don't deserve it. And I will be okay. Because last year was pretty painful too. And I, I pretty much dumped my 401k one year and now I'm paying for it over like three years. My, my taxes have been like really, really bad. So... And also me going to the get my taxes done, it's kind of shameful for me to, to talk to the owner because um, she's kind of judging me like the past few years. And then it's like, I'm, I'm a prideful person and, and I don't want to, I don't want to look bad. So hopefully next year, my taxes will be a lot less. I'm hoping that I don't owe anything. That's my goal. So that, that's why it's important to have a budget. It's important to set yourself up because imagine if I wasn't in good standings, I didn't have a financial plan, that I would be in really big trouble because imagine if I had kids or if I had a car payment, I had a mortgage, I had all of these like random expenses, that I would be in really big trouble. It'd just be really stressful and I would have a lot of anxiety. And these are ways of how you can minimize your anxiety is by having a budget, by being more careful with what you're spending. Obviously spend money on the things that you value like food or if you need to go on vacations or if you go to school or something like that. But um, I think my main problem was I'm not being long term with investments and I would say I would try my best to be more long term this year because my investment account, it hasn't been growing as much as I would like. So um, I'm trying to, I want to double it essentially by two or three years. And then I think that it is possible. I would just have to be patient. And maybe my goal, my goal was to do 50 or 60% into the market, but I think that it would be more like 30% is more realistic. So we'll, we'll see. But I'm trying not to control certain things. So um, I pretty much already allocated each dollar that I make, it has a job. I already allocated the dollar to the job, so I'm not going to be spending my money on like random stuff. And it, it's better to know, have information so that you, you know where the money's going specifically. And right, right now in my life, I could buy a new car, but I'll need a new car, so. I can buy a new computer, a camera, but I don't need it. So uh, maybe if I had a business or a side stream that I could justify these expenses because I would be able to write them off. But right now I cannot justify uh, making these purchases. Like I could buy a new phone, I don't need a new phone. So do you value right now? Are you living for right now? Or do you want to be well off later, right? Do, do you want purchases now or do you want to be able to purchase things in the future? So I, I want my dollars to be growing. I want my dollars to be making more dollars. That, that's why I'm more focused on investing. So keep most of your money in your investment account so you think that you don't have a lot. So my bank account, there's like $100 in it. And most of my money, it's in Fidelity. It's in my investment accounts. It's not in my checkings account because I don't want to trick myself into thinking that I have more money than I do. So just say, for example, if I had $1,000 in my bank account, then I would think that I have $1,000 to spend. And that's not true because I have bills. I have, the money has to go somewhere. It has a plan already. So that, oh, also, well, when you have like, just say for example, if you had $1,200 in your bank account, 
um, only look at you know the, the three digits like you only have two hundred dollars and then some change and then just ignore the thousand also but before I used to have a checkings account and then a savings account and I I just don't like it because I don't have a business right now and I, I like everything consolidated so everything's in one place and that that's how I manage it versus having like two separate accounts it was kind of annoying to close the the savings account that's why I didn't keep it um, I just didn't see the benefit of having it also for chase cards so one, one of my friends she has uh, American Express and mo most people don't take American Express and then I, I just said you know <laughs> open up a chase card so I ain't gotta pay <laughs> you know, essentially and then um, chase cards they're good because they have good perks um, I like them they're they have a lot of different branches and one, one thing that I did with my chase cards is I would open one chase card I would use it for a year and then I would open up a second chase card and then I would take this credit line I would transfer it over and then I would close this one so just say for example if, if I had a thousand each I'm going to transfer as much as I can over here and then this would be a two thousand dollar credit card and then you use this for another year or another two years open up a different chase card and then do the same thing take this credit line move it over close and then you'll have a bigger credit line and you should have a big credit line because you just shouldn't have more than 10 percent worth of debt on your credit line so if this was a thousand dollars you don't want to have more than a hundred dollars in debt and try and pay off your bills each month so you don't accrue interest and technically i'm always looking at my account Every time I make a purchase, I, I try and pay it off as soon as I can. Uh, maybe it's a waste of time, but it's more peace of mind for me. Also, for uh, for phones, just say, for example, when you buy a new phone, they, they show you how much it costs for 36 months, right? So they would take the phone. Just say, for example, if it was 14400 uh, and then you add your tax, California is 10% about and then it's like fifteen hundred fifty dollars right so over three months or three years you would be paying like per month is like 40 or 50 bucks right it's not that much money but it is a lot of money so uh, don't be fooled by making these small payments over time like if you don't have enough money to buy it outright cash you probably shouldn't be buying it in my opinion